Okay, I'm back for just a, a brief second. Um, not enough time has elapsed, but I thought I'd show you. I'm going to try to turn you around and hopefully hope that you can you can see all of this. I'm going to have to go this way, I think. Yeah, okay. All right. My ham actually fell apart, so that's part of the ham. These are all the pig's knuckles, and I don't know if you can see this one. You know... Um, your soup meat is done when the ham hock splits like this. And they'll all have a split. I don't, hopefully you can see that. These are still steaming. But that's how you know uh, your ham meat is done. And like I said, you don't really need to, to cook the ham all that much. Um, hour hour and a half I let this go for an hour and a half and that was plenty long enough I did throw all the parsley the onions um the celery and the uh peppercorns are all gone they're in the trash and I'm not going to show you that because my trash is is bad but you don't want any of that stuff back in your soup now what you're going to do is you're going to build on the stock that's in the pot um and to do that, once the meat is cool enough for you to um, handle, and it's it's getting there, I might actually be able to, to do part of this, is you're going to cut it. You're going to cut it into to chunks that you think um, you can eat or you like to put in your soup. Now, I'm going to show you a trick. Um, some of the, I'm going to get really close in here. Hopefully you can see this. This is all fat. This, this part right here, that's all fat. You don't want that in your soup because then your your soup takes on a fatty taste. So trim any fat that you have off of your ham. Um, if you're going to use the ham hocks, those are more hands-on to get to the meat. Um, like I said, I use them more for flavoring than I do the meat. Um, they're a good little treat for the dogs. Um, just don't give them, and I'm going to... Hopefully this one's cool enough. Don't give them this part of the ham hock. Um, discard that because it's really, really tough. Um, and it's not good for them. You can, uh, they'll enjoy the meat underneath though. Um, but make sure that, that um, your ham hocks don't have salt or added flavor earring to them. If they do, then don't give them to your dog because you don't want anything bad to happen to your fur babies. But they do enjoy these as a treat and don't ever give them the bone. Um, the problem with a pig knuckles um, or ham hock bone is it's got multiple bones and those can be a choking hazard for your four-legged um, family members. So um, it's very easy to pull apart. There is meat in it that you can add to your soup, and I do do that sometimes. Um, it is a little bit tricky getting the meat off of the ham hock, and I'm going to try to put you there. Hopefully, ugh, here we go. It'll be nice when I get a, a, my new GoPro going. Okay, so what you're going to do, let's see if this one's still a little bit hot, but this should peel off relatively easy. And that's all the skin. This part, dis discard. You don't want that in your soup. You don't want to even eat it. It's really rubbery and tough, and that's just going to go in there. So you're left with this. With Yeah, this is a little bit hot. You're left with this. Um, there's a little bit of skin right there that you can pull out. There's a lot of fat around the pig's knuckle, but... Um, I'll take, oop, take one little piece off and show you. Okay, that is a piece of meat that you can actually put in your soup. It will taste just like your ham. You won't even know the difference. Um, like I said, you can, you can add it back to the soup. If you are just turned off by this, don't use ham hocks. If you do not like the idea about putting a ham hock in, um, don't do it. That That's your thing. It does add a little bit more flavor um, when you're making a ham and split pea soup. If you're just making split pea, you don't need to go through all of this work. It's a lot of work. By the way, that's one of the bay leaves. Discard the bay leaves. Um, 
you don't want those in your soup either because they're really tough and they add no more purpose to the thing. But what you're going to do, make sure your hands are clean. Is You're just going to basically tear apart. Um, you're going to see a little bit of the tendon um, from the foot. You just want to discard that because it's a little bit rubbery. It'd be the same as eating like one of the chicken tendons on a chicken leg. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean all of this up, chop it, and put it back in my soup. My soup is not boiling. I haven't turned the flame on yet because I've got to add my vegetables and everything to it. Once I'm, I got the meat all done and added back to the broth, then I'll put the stove back on. This is when you want to let it boil. You want to let it come to a rolling boil and then turn it down to about a medium because you are going to want to cook your potatoes and the rest of your vegetables. Um, so I'll be back in a, in a little bit to show you the next step to the soup. Okay, welcome back. As you can see, I have chopped all of my ham. And I actually did use a little bit of my um, ham hocks and I chopped those up. And you actually would not be able to tell which is which. Um, but I did give these these guys got all got their T-R-E-A-T. -E I don't want to say, matter of fact, Miley in the background is going to be barking because she thinks she's entitled to another one. Once you have all of this, this done, um, put it back in, in your stock. Um, you're going to find, if you find like little pieces of, of green, throw those away. Always keep your hands clean. So I just washed mine. Um, but that's all the ham. Now, you might be wondering what kind of ham can you use? Well, this was just the spiral ham that I actually double smoked on my big green egg. Um, and we'll go into grilling um, probably maybe in the next week or two. There's a few um, meals that I'm, I have in my mind that I want to do on the egg. And I'm going to teach you... Um, some barbecue techniques that you can use on your grill. It doesn't have to be a big green egg. That's just what I own. Um, anyway, now that the ham's chopped, we're going to add it back into the um, the stock pot. And you're going to see this kind of off camera uh, because, well, I actually, wait. Let's see if I can move you guys. And you'll see I still have the liquid. Go ahead and turn turn your stove back on now. Because um, now is when you want to get your your um, stock going. And I will let you in on a secret. I'm very glad I didn't add salt to the soup because the ham hocks were very salty. Um, and that's one little thing about ham hocks is they can get very, very salty. What I'm going to do is... Yeah, my stock has the right amount of salt. I don't need to add any salt to this. Um, any more salt and the soup would be really salty. So I'm glad I didn't add any salt. Um, like I said, you can always add salt down the road. Now, there are some things that I will, will add salt while it is cooking. Like if I'm doing a chicken noodle or even a beef a vegetable you're going to want to season. With hams and smoked meats, a lot of times they already have enough salt in them that you, you don't want to overpower a soup or a stock with too much salt. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add, we're going to drop our ham in. I'm going to pick up my cutting board. Hopefully you don't drop. Okay, I did not. Good. Okay. And you might be wondering why I switched uh, pots. Well, truth be told is um, when I add the potatoes, this is going to fill up more to the top. I'm not going to add any more liquid. Um, to this because it's got all the flavoring and stuff that I want. <coughs> and 
gonna wash my hands again now. <clears throat> now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start doing our potatoes. And actually, I'm going to use the cutting board. And I'm going to grab my potatoes. And for this, you can you don't have to use red. You can use whatever potato you like. A uh, um, rusted potato is, is fine. Um, if you do use the rusted potato, you're going to use less. Um, if you don't want to put potatoes in, you don't have to. This is the one fun thing about uh, being able to cook and experiment. So if you don't like potatoes or you feel t potatoes are going to be too much, don't add them. You don't have to. At this point, then, what I would say is you're going to want to get this to a boil and then add your peas. But we're going to do that a little bit later. So I got my potatoes. I'm going to put about, this is the size of my potato. I'm going to probably put about, I'm going to put a, a, a probably five. I'm going to do, because some of these are, are on the small side, if you can see that. So five potatoes is more than enough for this recipe. I know there's a lot of stock in here, but if you're going to put other vegetables like carrot, celery along your, your peas, you really don't need to overpower the soup. What you are going to want to do if you're using the skin on them is give them a good wash. Um, that just takes all the dirt off of it. Like I said, <coughs> excuse me, you can peel the potato. If you don't like the skin, <clears throat> feel free to peel the potato with the vegetable peeler. Um, or you can leave them whole. If I'm red potatoes, I, I more just will quarter them. And I'll show you what I mean about quartering. Let me wash this potato. Okay. I'm going to put the potatoes that I'm haven't washed yet, but I'm just going to do one potato to show you what I mean. Let me see if that'll probably not sit like that, but maybe if I do, yeah, I need, I need a tripod for this. Ah, that's not going to be really. Sorry, I know my thumb is, is in the way around the camera. Yeah, that's not going to sit because this is a little 